know you're not supposed to talk when I turn the headphones on, right? Because I, I can't hear what you're saying, and I don't trust what you say. I just said we're going early. Oh, no, but you laughed after that. I did. So did KC. There was more to that conversation. I'm paranoid now. So that's the way we're starting today here yes. at KCIM Sports oh, Rewind with oh. mass paranoia in the studio. All those years dealing with Honold in here, right? I know. <laughs> It scarred me for life, I swear. We all scarred for life. (laughs) So last week I made a little fun of the Chicago White Sox. Yeah. uh, Losing, uh, what, 121 games officially this year. 41 and 121. Yay, way to go, White Sox. You really, really did a nice job this season. Uh, So we mentioned Gary Jensen's name. Gary's the manager over at the the, uh, Jefferson High V now. Yep. Used to be over here in Carroll for a long time. Um, He called me up the other day after we mentioned it. Yeah, I heard all about it and stuff. He goes, "Made my day and all this." He goes, "You know, I do have a Chicago White Sox tattoo on my on my leg on my calf." He goes, "I have the whitest legs in town because I haven't been able to wear shorts all season long because of the shame of that Chicago White Sox tattoo." Yeah, I feel for him with that. Yeah, Um, who's to blame? I mean, who do you blame? Is it the GM? Is it Reinsdorf? Yeah, the manager. I mean, who's to blame? The, their management is horrid. It is. Uh, I mean, it's. It, I don't know how they managed to win a championship. All those. It was a two thousand five. I think it was. Yeah, it was it's been a while. There. But, it has. Yeah. But man, I, I bring back. You know, Ozzy Guillen was the manager then, and all yeah. that. So he was a Chicago White Sox guy. Yeah. But until you know, after that, they just they have no identity really. Right. The whole organization. It's gonna be a clean house sweep. I feel like. Yeah, I, I have no doubt about that. My twins collapsed. Right before the playoffs, yeah. so but they're not changing anything. Not, not well, at least not the manager or the uh, baseball mm-hmm. operations guy or anything like that. So we'll see what they have to do in the off season. But so what Pete went, Rose what went this wrong? Morning. What went wrong with oh, the, twins? the Twins? Injuries. I mean, starting okay. pitching went down, and okay. all of a sudden, just yeah, yeah. Carlos Correa went down. Buxton was down for a long time. Royce Lewis was out for a little bit late in the season. Just. Yeah, there was young guys. It was like a triple-A lineup a lot of times. Okay. There was a few good pitchers left, but not enough. Not yeah. enough to carry you through that. So, But, they, yeah, there was – and they just didn't hit. Right. So, um, Pete Rose passing away this morning, 83 years old. I'm not sure if I feel really bad. You know, Pete was just one of those arrogant guys that I never really cared for. Do you, do you think now that he's passed, he'll get to be in the Hall of Fame? I think so. I, I think he well, will. Well, he's going to be out of his own way now. Right, yeah. I As a Cincinnati Reds fi- fan and, and lifelong Cincinnati Reds fan, I, uh, I've always had mixed emotions. I loved Pete as a player, even when he managed. Just we took second place pretty much every year that he was there. Um, always felt like as a player with the way he played the game, he deserved to be in the hall. But then there was that part of me that said, you know, for 30, 35 years, whatever it was, he lied and said that he didn't bet on baseball. And then he, he acknowledges that he did, you know, in a book so that he mm-hmm. can make money because it was always about Pete making money, you know, and stuff. And, and so I, as a player, I think he deserves, I think he'll go in now. It may not be right away. They're not going to go, oh yeah, here, let's, let's yeah, yeah. In this year. But I think he'll get in now and stuff, but yeah, it's still sad, know. still sad know. to see him go, you know. 1919 Chicago White Sox, they're not in. That's true. I mean, true. Joe Jackson and things like that, right. so they're not yeah. in. Yeah, I mean, it could be, they may wait until, and it may not be, like the actual committee, it might be like the 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 other the, the writers may never put him in, but you might get you know that secondary committee. I forget what yeah, they're the called, the, the veterans, veterans committee, committee or something, may end up putting him in at, at but, some but, point. But is he going to go in before Bonds or Clemens or some of those steroids guys? I don't know, and I hope someday those guys well, go I, in. Um, you look at you look at Bonds and Clemens and all of them, like their steroids impacted the way they played. Pete Rose's betting never impacted the way he played. Right. No. no, no. But as a manager. He was a jerk on and off the field right. no matter yeah, what. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, but as a manager, to bet on your own team, I know he never bet on the Reds to lose. But, you know, if if you bet on us to, to only win by three and we're mm-hmm. up by four, do you make that pitching change yeah. that, that, that saves your bet? You know, so so what he did. I, you know, and I, 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 I say that I hope those other guys go in too someday simply for the fact that they're not the only guys in that generation that did it uh, that were doing it and there are mm-hmm. guys that are in the hall of fame there are guys that are worse people 
than those guys oh, in, yeah. in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Um, Barry Bonds was a Hall of Famer before he started clubbing 60 home runs, you know, for the for the Giants. Roger Clemens was the best pitcher in baseball before. You know, Sammy Sosa is the one I question, mm-hmm. and I know you're a Cubs fan, but he was he was not a household name until, until he became yeah. a home run guy. No. Uh, and, and so the steroids, I think, may have impacted his Come ability. On, you, you don't, to you don't, you don't to go do back it, to so. him and Mark McGuire having a home run off? I do, the, yeah, but they were yeah. they were using it that time. Yeah, yeah they were both, yeah, yeah. on the steroids so. that time. Uh, the thing I remember most about Pete Rose is him just demolishing that catcher in the All Star game. I was like, yep. that was ridiculous. Yep, yep, and that's where the nickname Charlie Hustle kind of got in there. And I, you know, yeah, that that was uncalled for, but. That was the way he played the game. It was all out every play of every game. Doesn't didn't, matter didn't what he game hurt it was. That guy and the yeah, guy was never the same. Yeah, the guy. I think he ruined his career, if I remember yeah. correctly. Blew out his collarbone or something of that in nature. In an all star. In an all star game. Yep. But I mean, that's, that's that's the way he played. You listen to Tom Brady talk about the excellence in his broadcast the other day and the whole, you know, um, comments uh, from Baker Mayfield and, <laughs> and stuff. And it's. Those elite guys, I mean, yeah. people didn't like playing with Tom Brady. People didn't like playing with Michael Jordan. People probably didn't like playing with Pete Rose because they held you to a different level. Yeah, well, he's uh, 83. We'll see if he makes yep. it into the Hall of Fame eventually here. And Dikembe Mutombo. I know oh, yeah. maybe not a ton of NBA fans out there, but uh, especially in this part of the Him country. Him wagging but, his uh, finger yes. at you. Get that but, stuff uh, out of passed, here, man. Passed away from uh, brain cancer at yesterday 58. as well. So, yeah. So, so, wow, so two Hall of Fame players, uh, one in baseball and one in the NBA. All right, let's get to our trivia question yep. here. I got a two-parter here for you. Oh, boy. Uh, let's talk about, first of all, baseball playoffs start today. Uh, who has the current record of the longest number of losing seasons i mean how many number of i mean who is the long biggest i don't know how to say it consecutive major league baseball losing seasons who holds that record right now actively rockies uh no the rockies no, do not. they were pretty good just a couple of years ago yeah angels the angels okay. yeah, the la angels uh they have nine years where they have not been a winner had Shohei Otani for right. a number of years. They've um, had the Mike best player Trout, in baseball. Albert Pujols. Mike Trout. Yeah. yeah. They just have not have been able to put together a winning team. Rockies are second with six, uh, along with the Pittsburgh Pirates at six. And the Washington Nationals at five. That, that one surprised surprise me. Man, but they, they won a World Series. They won a World Series yeah. here probably five, six or years 2019, ago. 2019, I think. It was probably yeah. five years ago. It yeah. Was, yeah, 2019 was, but was that. Or 2020 a- uh, and, was when they started that. And when was the year the Angels were good with Mike Sosha? Um Boy, they, they pretty much fell apart, though, after that, didn't they? They yeah. really haven't been good since that year, if I yeah. remember correctly. Yeah, they really so. fell apart after social left. Yeah. All right, the other side of that is uh, football. Who has the longest active streak of losing seasons in the NFL? Do you know that one? Oh, I know who's the longest active non-playoff team in the NFL because it's my favorite team. <laughs> <laughs> and that would be? The Jets. The Jets. I was going to say, are they the longest no, uh, no, because we went. They are, are they? They are. Yeah, the eight of them. Uh, it was eight. Ryan Fitzpatrick Patrick, was their quarterback yeah, the last time six. they had a, a winning yeah. season. They're, uh, I, didn't, I didn't realize it was that long. Their offense didn't look very good the other it's night. Denver, it's, but Denver's defense looked pretty yeah, good. Yeah, it did. But is Aaron Rodgers finally lost a step and lost uh, some arm I, strength? He's 40 some years I know. old. I, I know. And coming back from a I, devastating I, injury. I, yeah. I think so. And I, they yeah. get my Vikings in London coming yeah, up this be next cool. Sunday. So. you got to be happy with oh. the way they're playing. They've got the I, MVP of the Sam league. Sam Darnold, right now. MVP, yeah. Former Jet. I know. Yeah, former <laughs> Jet is an MVP. <laughs> it, it's funny how Sam Darnold plays well for the Vikings and who takes the most grief? The Jets. Yeah. Because they had him first. Yeah. And yeah. His, but he was, was, he, was he was terrible with the Jets. But they had a disaster. <laughs> well, we had a disaster of a team. And everybody, I think when I heard, uh, from other former players because I watch some other things on like YouTube and they're like, oh, that's the worst organization yeah. in football. You don't want to play for the Jets. Yeah, so, yeah. I don't uh, want them. Here, here's a stat for you. The Vikings have only trailed for three and a half minutes the entire season. And that yeah. was to the Giants. And that was yeah. to the Giants. <laughs> they haven't they haven't been behind a second from playing San Francisco, the, Te- the Texans, and the Packers. I will tell you this. I watched uh, Sunday a little bit. They got up, what, 21 to nothing. I flipped over, started watching a replay of the Nebraska game. And I'd never looked back at yeah. that Minnesota game. And then I see they won by two. So mm-hmm. they had to hold on. Well, yeah. it, was, they, it should have been much more lopsided. They had a really stupid uh, muff punt at the end of the first half that gave Green Bay a touchdown just before halftime. 
And yeah, there was an interception that probably should not have been an interception. There was some other, they fumbled the ball uh, down near the goal line. So, I mean, they, they should have run that score up a little bit. Okay. More. But still, yeah, had to hang on to win. So is it the snapper, the punter? Who's, who's your most frustrated at? You haven't announced that for a uh, while. Who's, who's, it was actually, it was a punt reception as Jaron uh, Naylor, Jaron, okay. Jaden, Jaden, Jaron. Jaron, whatever. <laughs> Jalen Naylor. Jalen Naylor. There you go. Uh, he went back and went to catch the punt and then wound up trying to catch it over his head in the oh, sun. Wow. And it just glanced off his hands, bounced right towards the end zone, and okay. then Green Bay scored a, like a play later. Uh, so is he your most, uh, the person eh. who makes you the most mad? Hey, you're 4 0. You're not going to single anybody out. <laughs> I don't I, know. I'm if... loving this NFL season. That's the way they're playing. Yeah. If you're an Iowa fan, you got to be upset with how Philadelphia is kind of treating Cooper DeGene right now. Did you see his two, uh, his two muff punts? In the Tampa Bay game, I did no. not. <laughs> but one, a Philadelphia gunner, like the guy on the outside, pushed a Buccaneer player right into him, muffed the punt, and then another one, his teammate comes just lays him out, running down the field, tries to stop, <laughs> can't stop, just lays Cooper out, muffs up another punt, and I'm like, oh yes, yeah, wow, yeah. I didn't, no, I'm gonna have to go back and look for well, Philadelphia that right now. Looks like a dumpster fire. Oh so, yeah, yeah, they their their head coach is on his way out. I'm if sure. they don't get it turned around, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm happy with that. <laughs> uh, let's talk about some big wins in high school football. Kemper and Carroll rolling out to some big wins on Friday night. Yeah, I, Kemper was awfully impressive both sides of the ball. Um, dominated a pretty good Green County team. Never really let them get going offensively. The one drive they had uh, turned into a one-handed uh, interception from Griffin Glenn in the end zone. And, and uh, you know, as a former defensive back, and you know, when I played in high school, that uh, it, it was fun watching Man. the way he turned the hips and turned and ran and found the ball and, and played that extremely he, well. But he's dominant. having a really quietly good season. He he's got, I think his yeah. third interception already on the year. So. Yeah, and just a sophomore. So uh, and offensively, uh, able to establish Jaron uh, Hoffman again in the run game, and and Braylon Alford came in and ran the ball well for him. They just were able to run the ball, and that opened things up uh, for Brock Bating in the pass game. But they're rolling um, they've got a big one coming up uh, this weekend the first rankings are out from the Iowa High School Athletic Association and these are the power rankings that they use to help kind of seed uh, you know the postseason and stuff Kemper coming in at number five in class and two-way uh, they go to Des Moines Christian who is ranked number seven in class 2A coming up this weekend. So uh, not going to be an easy one, but the winner of this one should be, you know, the absolute favorite to win the district this year. One thing I want to point out about Kemper, you know last year they threw the ball all over the place. This year seems to be getting it done on the ground. Jaron Hoffman's been a pleasant surprise for him. I think yep. four straight games over 100 yards? Yes, and so. the offensive line has kind of mm -hmm. started to gel and everything. I think that uh, they've kind of found yeah. their identity this year, and it's more with the ground game mm -hmm. than with the, the aerial attack I was last say, year. Where do you think they're ranked if they don't have Heelan on the schedule? Well, uh, they're probably up. Yeah, they're probably up a spot or two. I don't know. You know, um, Spirit Lake and Van Meter uh, both have one loss as well. Um, you know, I, I think they may jump Van Meter in those rankings, but you're also looking at the tradition of Van Meter and the tradition of Spirit Lake, so it'd be hard hard to see maybe Kemper, even an undefeated Kemper team, jumping over them. So, Carroll High going up to making the long road trip. MLC Floyd Valley coming away with a 20-point uh, win. Uh, their, their two toughest tests will be these next coming weeks. Yep. You'll find out a lot about Carroll. Uh, on Friday for their homecoming against Bishop Heelan. But MOC, I think a lot of people picked as the district favorite to come in in, in Class 3A District 1, and Carroll went up there and kind of handled them yep. on the ground. Tatum Peterson had a great game, 252 on the ground, only on 28 carries, a couple of touchdowns. Carter Essek, you know, I, I think I remember correctly, 7 of 11, 194 yards, yeah. four, four touchdowns, three of them going to Owen Clucky. Owen Clucky. Averaging over 30 yards of reception right now, six touchdowns on the year. They're just the offense is clicking the last three weeks. So, so you you're pretty good at remembering numbers. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I I, I remember talking with Coach Rowetter Saturday morning. Seven catches, six touchdowns for for Owen Clucky. The yeah, last three It's got to be something games, like that. Something like that. Yeah. So it, almost every time he's touching the ball, mm -hmm. isn't has it been a touchdown? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so his his numbers are incredible yeah, had right four, now. Four four catches, three touchdowns last week. So yep. Uh, game of the week had to be South Central Calhoun and I.K. Manning, 16-13. A defensive game. You know, the offense has kind of struggled there a little bit. I.K. Manning able to throw the football really well. They're probably the best aerial performance of the yep. season. have been Ramsey, I think, 15-25, 170-something, a touchdown. Didn't turn the ball over. Not a whole lot of turnovers in the game. I think 
two by one by each team. So like you can't look at the turnover battle as the big difference uh, in that game. Cole Higgins hit a 32 yard field goal to kind of put him ahead in the third quarter. And in the fourth quarter, you know, both teams really never really gave up. You know, I came in and had some drives, but unable to do much with them. So uh, it was a really defensive game if you listen to it and 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 we're up there watching it. Yeah, and both of them going to be really tested this week. Uh, you know, with the win, South Central Calhoun stays in the hunt for a postseason berth. They'll step out of district this week, taking on number one West Hancock, um, and ICAM Manning gets number two ACGC. Um, you and I, Casey and John, was listening as well. Uh, you know, you look at. I can't manning schedule the last four weeks. You, you go know, from Earlham, who's ranked. Yep, a ranked Earlham team to a ranked Riverside team to South Central Calhoun, and then on the road, and then you've got a ranked um, ACGC team. You know, I, I thought there were five really, really good teams in that district to start the season, and for for I can manning in a way, poor them that they get the other four of them. Boom, 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 boom. Mm-hmm. So. The other one's uh, game of the week, uh, ESAC County, 27 nothing over Pokey. So that's a, ve- a very nice win for ESAC County. They've, they've got a really legit chance now at, at, at that second spot in the district. I think their game against Manson Northwest Webster coming up here in a couple of weeks probably going to be the one that decides that. But uh, they, they've got a chance to get on a, a run yeah, here I, and gain some confidence. I would say with a with a win probably on Friday being that I, th- I think they get four, right? Yep. So the top four, They're pro- I would say they're what – guarantee it but probably looking pretty good as a playoff lock with the win on Friday against 0-5 Eagle Grove but McCullough told me when I interviewed him yesterday that last two years they haven't played good on the road they've got a long bus right up there that he, he's really going to challenge his kids to get off the bus and come ready to play in a game that they should uh, should win yeah they shouldn't go into any game just like showing up they, mm-hmm. they have to play well to win but I, I, I literally think they've got a chance to yeah. win out um, and finish off a pretty good season. And it's going to be huge because if they get the second spot in that district, they get a host to home playoff game. Yep, which would be huge for them, absolutely. Now, you mentioned the rankings earlier. Audubon is in the rankings at number six, and they just uh, cruised by Coon Rapids Baird. Yeah, um, took charge early, um, something that they didn't do the first two weeks of the season. Now the last three, they've they've taken charge early, if I remember correctly. I think it was 32 nothing at the end of the mm-hmm. first quarter. Uh, and a lot of that came in about the last five minutes of the quarter, and that's what they're capable of doing is just putting spurts together against you. This is this is a, a dome quality team. Whether they get there or not, it, we'll have to wait and see how the pairings look and who they will maybe have to go through. But they're, they're good enough to be uh, in the dome. The interesting thing is, as we talked last week, that Arweva was going over to Woodbine, and Woodbine wasn't ranked. Now the High School Athletic Association rankings come out, and they're fifth. Mm-hmm. Woodbine's fifth in that. So not ranked by anybody else, but fifth by the association. And are, and are Weva up in that one, 20 to 6 at yeah. one point. Yep. Uh, end up losing 50 to 20 to a, to a pretty good Woodbine team. Uh, doesn't really hurt our Weva, but now it's kind of looking like that uh, week that week eight week eight game against Booyer Valley at home is going to be a big key like it was last year, them making the playoffs or missing the playoffs. Yeah, that game there could determine um, who the final seed is, mm-hmm. you know, coming out, out of that district and going into the playoffs. So, but, you know, I think if you're them, you, you still got to stay healthy. I think they had to be really happy with the way they controlled that first mm-hmm. half against Woodbine. They, they were in control of that football game. Heartbreak for Glidden Ralston against Collins Maxwell, 46-42. Wildcats taking the loss there. Seems like they just trailed the whole game. They couldn't really. Uh, it was it was a close game throughout. If I remember, I remember typing up the scores, but they just couldn't really get that drive together to give them the lead. You know, they they were able to keep it. You know, by a, in, in, within a touchdown at you know two points, three points, but just couldn't get that score to put them on top for good. Did they have? I, I you you wrote the story this week. So did they have some possessions down by le- like less than I, a touchdown? I, I I would I would assume so. I don't okay. know for hundred percent sure because okay. we didn't get that kind of stuff. Okay. But um, you know the way it seems the the way the score was going, you know by quarter wise, it just seemed at the end of every quarter they were down by two or down by three. Okay. And so they couldn't really get themselves just, ahead yeah wasn't for sure if they just didn't get the stop they needed yeah. to get the possession or if they just kept every time yeah. colin scored they scored to answer it but just were yeah, always that i'm not 100 sure on so. so 
All right, so that kind of wraps up the week in high school football. Uh, we do have to get our sack of the week in from yes. Market on 30. Yes, uh, and uh, Kent Sanders uh, from the Kepper Knight, such a dominant linebacker and has this ability. I don't know how he does it, uh, but uh, he reads those creases extremely well and then uses that great quickness to be able to, to get through them, but had a big sack uh, you know, against Green County. So Kent Sanders is our uh, sack of the game. And our sack of the game winner, John, is, is Jill Higgins of Lorville. So, yep. Jill's, congratulations. You got that sack of groceries coming your way from Market on 30. Make sure you get down and uh, sign up this week for the sack of the game. Good morning, all student athlete parents. Don't let your hectic schedules keep you from feeding your family. The Market on 30 can help you with quick and easy options like Pasquale's Pizzas, our famous mac and cheese, chicken strips, and much more. The Market on 30 in the BP Plaza. Flitten. Well, we're back oh, once flitten. again at KCIM Sports Rewind. <laughs> and uh, of course, King. Congratulations to our uh, Jill Higgins of Gin of Lorville, our sack of the game. This Friday night, boy, Carol Kemper, they have got some terrific matchups. They do, yeah. Um, Carol hosting Heal, and I'm, I'm kind of excited. I haven't had a chance to call a Carol game yet this year, so I get that game coming up on Friday night and excited to see the guys get a chance to play. But you heard Casey talk earlier that the next two weeks, they got uh, Heelan at home this week, and then they go to Sergeant Bluff. Um, the week mm-hmm. after, so the, the, they can't look past this healing game. Got to stop the running game and get their own running game going. And then Kemper at Des Moines Christian, Nick gets that one. Um, Nate Graving going to be helping him out. Um, you know, I, I think Kemper still is the, the class of this district, uh, but Des Moines Christian offensively is is good. And uh, from everything I understand, uh, Mark Sawhill, longtime coach over at Jefferson Scranton and Jefferson Scranton, Peyton Shernan, then Green County, is the D coordinator. I understand that uh, Des Moines Christian's defense better this year than it's been. I, I'm interested to see who can make a stop on defense in that game. Not saying that the defenses are bad, but right. with both offenses, the capability of putting up a bunch of points, yep. it's going to come down who can make more stops in that game. And, and Carroll is going to have to throw the football well, I think, uh, in their in their game against uh, Bishop Heelan coming up on Friday. Both teams going to want to run the football. Both teams really good at running the football. Who can throw it better might be the, the outline factor of that, and I give the upper edge to Carroll on that one right now. All right, power rankings. Who's your top three teams this week after uh, week five? I mean, Audubon's going to stay on top with, yep. with them. With, with a 64-6 to six win. Yeah, yeah. And, and they're undefeated, look like the favorites in that district right now. And then, you know, I, I my other two are probably Carroll and Kemper. I, I, I would say Kemper, probably the slight edge just because of the, I mean, I, I, the, the competition that they've played. Uh, and then I, I, you could you could inter-swap Carroll and Kemper, I really you feel could. like. Agreed. Uh, but that's kind of the, the other two that I, I, would, I, would, I would throw up there. Yeah, and I, that's, that's where I would go right now, too. Um, I, you know, I, Ottoman, I, Kemper, Carroll. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, and like Casey said, I agree. Um, Carroll and Kemper could be inter-swapped. You could almost tie them for second right now. So. Yep. so there you go. There's week uh, five of high school football. Week six is going to be a great one coming up this yep. Friday night. We'll have more KCIM Sports Rewind coming up next, being brought to you by St. Anthony Rehab Services. As the athletes at your house prepare for hard work and fun of the season, remember that St. Anthony Rehab Services provides physical therapy for any sports injury that may sideline your member of the team. Sports injuries can plague kids of all ages and keep them from playing the sport they love. Athletes will be under the direct supervision of a certified and licensed healthcare professional in the newly renovated sports performance facility. If an injury is keeping your athlete out of the game, call St. Anthony Rehabilitation Services at 794-5000 for sports injury and treatment rehab. It's KCIM Sports Rewind. We do it every Tuesday morning at 930 and of course a podcast available on the website immediately following. We're going to talk a little volleyball here in a few moments, but a little cross country last night, Sac County on the road at Alta Aurelia. Yeah, and the boys continue to run well. Uh, Landon Spore third, Riley Aragon fifth, and uh, Owen Engel taking ninth. So three runners in the top nine, that boys team with those three um, competitive in every single meet that they yeah, go to. Got a and, to and, they, yep. they got a chance to qualify yep. for state as a team again, just depends on where they have to go and who what other teams will be there. And those three have been kind of the leaders they have uh, in the front pack. And I know talking with Coach Wilkie this morning that she feels like the, the other three are really starting to close that gap, you know, between between the first three and, and, and the other ones. So And that's what they need. They mm-hmm. need a fourth or a fifth to jump in there to, to give them a better chance of, of, of making the state meet. And then Libby Veit's their only girl. And 
Um, she continues to get better every single meet. Finished twenty yeah. third last night, ran one of her better times of the year. So was a little injured early in the mm-hmm. year, still kind of battling through that injury, but uh, running pretty well right now. It's a great day today to run too. Kemper and South Central Calhoun girls and boys for both are going to be over at Denison tonight. Yeah. And, uh, feel bad. It's a hilly um, course. I, it's a hilly course. I love going over and covering that meet, but I've got uh, the volleyball match at uh, Kemper Host in Glenwood with first place on mm-hmm. the line in the in the Hawkeye 10 tonight, so not going to make it over there. But, uh, um, yeah, that's a fun fun one, uh, and there's some big hills. Uh, there's one say, of them that's almost straight up and there's down. There's got to be some kids out there that love that uh, love that torture of running the hills. There are. There are, yeah. Uh, most of them don't really like it, I don't think, but you get the select few that really love you know, running that's, hills. That's a great equalizer. It man. is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you run hills well, you're going to run well over at the Denison meet. All right. Let's talk some volleyball. What's happened over the last week or so? Uh, Kemper continues to play well. Their only loss in the season come to a very good Bishop Penland team, a team that's yep. probably going to be down in Coralville playing playing at the state volleyball tournament. But yep. um, they continue to play well. I think kind of got surprised by Shenandoah a little bit, but I think Shenandoah better than what people think. Yes, um, you, Shenandoah you know, I mean, jumped you, into the rankings yep. after after yeah. losing to Kemper because of, of, of how well they played in, in that match. But uh, I, I think Carroll High continues to grow. I know at one point they were 2-1 and one over at the tournament. Uh, at uh, Nevada on the weekend, but uh, three of their four losses came to teams ranked um, and stuff, and they played those teams well. So I think Carroll continuing to grow. Um, really like what Ikea Manning is doing right now under head coach McKaylee Cron. Got a chance to, to watch them in Audubon over at Denison at the Booyer Valley Tournament uh, on Saturday, and um, they end up going 3-1. and one. Their only loss, a three-set loss to Denison Schleswig, uh, who, of course, is a 4A mm-hmm. school, and Ikea Manning just an, an A school, so um, or a 1A school, excuse me. So, um, you know, I... Addison, Bandow, Keegan, A. Shide, Grace Carroll give them three really nice hitters. Um, Carly Arp setting the ball well for them. I like the way Anna St- uh, Stangle is playing in the back row. They serve the ball well, so they're playing well. Um, Kuhn struggling, I, and I'm not going to say struggling a little bit, but faltered a little bit. Mm-hmm, um, last week. They've lost three of their last four matches, so uh, look for them to, to maybe try and bounce back this week. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, we got some good volleyball games on time, on on hand tonight. So a lot of, a lot of the yeah. area teams in action. Yeah. So Xyro and Kimbledon hosting um, Booyer Valley. Booyer Valley and and first place kind of on the line. If the Spartans win that one, then then you the top four teams in the league all have a one loss. loss. Yeah. And so. then tonight you've got Glenwood and Kemper yes. on kick 106.7. That's going to be a great one in the Hawkeye Ten. Yeah, looking forward to that one. Two ranked teams. Uh, you know we've. Uh, we've been waiting all year for these matches kind of for Kemper to, to come around. Um, mm-hmm. You know, not that they haven't played some good teams, uh, but you, you get those elite level teams that they're going to be, you know, a Glenwood Lewis central kind of down the stretch of the season here. And this is going to be a fun one. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited for this matchup tonight. Yeah. So volleyball going to be exciting tonight. Once again, on the on the on the schedule for tonight, Glenwood at Kemper on Kick 1067. Jeff, you've got the call on that one. Casey, you're going to be over in Glidden tonight with our Weva at Glidden Ralston. That should begin about seven o'clock as well. Those are our broadcast games for tonight. Yes, uh, and should be a couple of good ones. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, Glidden Ralston, I think, played really well. They're starting to come together after the injuries mm-hmm. and stuff. Find themselves, you know, and, and refining themselves. Uh, McKenna Weeder and setting the ball well for them. They've kind of made some adjustments in the back row, and and Arweva just needs to continue to take steps forward. Um, I know they struggled the other night against Xyro Corn Kimbleton. Um, you know, if they come out focused tonight, though, uh, and play the way they were early in the year, I think they'll have a chance to be right in. Somewhat that one. of a rivalry game yep. tonight, so it should be. It, I, it, to, to me, when we played rivalry games in high school, you just come out more focused for those, yep. and I expect that tonight from both teams. So. They mean a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Calendar now October. What does that mean for teams out there in regards to, say, I mean, I always thought, whenever I heard the baseball playoffs on the radio, I was out traveling doing volleyball tournament games. Yep. Uh, so, I mean, as the calendar turns, what do teams – I really need to focus in on right now. I think if you're football teams, you 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 can't afford to lose again, um, especially if you want to get into the playoffs and maybe be able to host. And so I think you've got to go out and be. There's you only know, three weeks left yeah. for a lot of teams. Yeah. So and uh, for volleyball, I think it's still trying to continue to get better. It's not that you, with everybody making the postseason in volleyball, you you can lose. But I think you want to start playing your best mm-hmm. now because the postseason's just a few weeks away. 
What does the schedule look like? I mean, when do the pairings come out? Do we know? And the, the I, yeah, I honestly, a to look at yeah, that. I, I I should look at that because it's going to be coming up here in, in in about two weeks. Probably is is about the time that yeah. the pairings are going to be coming out. So things are going to be getting uh, getting exciting here uh, here soon. So. All right, power rankings for volleyball. What do you got for us? Give me the top right. three teams. Kemper's got to be the top team, and and, yep. and 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 I and I think you look at same thing kind of with football. I think SEC ESAC kind of interchangeable right now. You know, uh, they're going to have a big match in a couple weeks to really probably decide the Twin Lakes Conference champion. So looking forward to that one as well. Yeah, um, both of them are going to have some tests before then. I, I know South Central still has Newell Fonda left that's on the after. schedule. And that's after, yep, after ESAC. But that ESAC matchup against South Central is going to weigh heavy on, on who wins the Twin Lakes Conference this year. So All right. so coming up also on the website, we heard you talking about this the other day. You were, uh, you're going to be having some athlete features coming up. What's the deal on this? Yeah, so uh, it's a new thing we've done with uh, Brink's Cabinets, um, and uh, we're going to be doing a, a spotlight uh, interview uh, with a female and a, and a male athlete uh, from our area schools every month. Um, so you'll kind of learn more about all the different sports they play in, schooling, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So, but uh, it's going to be kind of a spotlight athlete uh, who's performing well and, and that kind of stuff uh, for that month. So, all right, look for that at sports.1380kcim.com and through the mobile app. And that is KCIM Sports Rewind for this week. Once again, catch a podcast available on the website and the mobile app coming up here in just a few more moments. It's KCIM Sports Rewind on 1380 AM, 95.1 FM. KCIM Carol.